Good evening and welcome to Terror Prime Live. I am E-Rock, standing in for Darth Anonymous and Darth, uh, Master Vornok, sorry. Um, they had prior engagements and couldn't be here. And uh, tonight's show is about the Learners in Exile experience. Uh, we, have, uh, we have our Learners in Experience uh, with us today. Uh, who we got here? Sorry, it's very bright outside. All right, um, starting off here, we have uh, uh, Thonalyn from uh, River City Jedi. Hey. Hello, hello. hello. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, glad you could make it, man. Uh, and um, next here, uh, we have Frank Knight from the Golden Gate Jedi. Hi. Uh, thank, thank you for having, for having me. me. Oh, yeah, it's cool to have, really always cool to have you here. It's good to good to actually see and hear you this time. <laughs> There's a first time for everything. Excellent. So hopefully not last. And, of course, Master Lucien Kane is here as well. Thank you so much for, uh, for making it. Uh, so glad you could be here on the holiday, uh, everybody. How you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing great. It's good to be here. Cool. Okay. So, uh, we have a nice uh, laid-back show for the holidays here. Uh, they chose me. Uh, I'm in London, Ontario, Canada. Uh, I guess I kind of volunteered. Uh, we're going to go for the one who might have been most uh, alert on the Friday after the, uh, the fourth there. So, uh, anyway, so uh, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, the learners in exile experience. Uh, it's something that you can uh, that you can sign up uh, to TPLA with, and what it is, uh, it's very similar to studying from home and watching their videos and and going in a safe spot to work on it. As in safe spot, as in spot you don't break something. Uh, versus, uh, it's it's basically the next uh, the next step uh, beyond that. Um, there is a uh, there's a Facebook group uh, for us. Uh, we get extra challenges that uh, that aren't publicly uh, distributed on on Facebook, uh, Facebook, YouTube, uh, and TPLA's uh, website as well. And uh, yeah, challenges, and uh, we also uh, yeah, sometimes get uh, private videos as well. Just advanced techniques from the, the videos that are publicly available. Um, so yeah, if you're checking this out uh, on Terra Prime, uh, Terra Prime's YouTube channel, there's tons of videos to go through. Uh, if you're just joining us uh, for the first time here, uh, you might want to just start right at the bottom and uh, start working your way up. That's what I did, and uh, that kind of I'm, I'm an apprentice now. So uh, just to briefly describe the uh, the, uh, the apprentice procedure. Uh, what you do if you're interested and you, know, you have a, a few of the moves under the belt. First thing you need to do is head to uh, Terra Prime Lightsaber Academy. <coughs> Terra Prime Lightsaber Academy. Uh, just the best way to find it is uh, Google TPLA Lightsaber, and that'll uh, that'll take you right to their uh, their Google page. And then on the left hand menu, at least it's not my cat. Uh, on the uh, left-hand navigation menu, you'll find the LX Apprentice, and then uh, there'll be instructions on uh, what you'll need to do to get signed up. Um, the neat thing about uh, what TPLA does for us here, uh, this is all open source. Uh, if, if you if you really want to improve and uh, and, and learn the uh, the techniques for using uh, an LED lightsaber, you got to put the effort in. Uh, uh, Master Anonymous and and Master Vornok um, provide so many materials and and Good, good stuff for, for anybody. Uh, for example, uh, my personal story is I'm a, I'm a musician and a computer geek. I mean, <laughs> what do I have <laughs> to do with the martial arts behind these things? Uh, I don't know. I love Star Wars and, well, you know, you know these, these things are generally inexpensive, uh, usually. So if you're going to, I guess, put an investment in and uh, buy a toy lightsaber you could put through a brick wall on a good day, <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, yeah, why why not learn how to use it properly? And that's when I stumbled on TPLA, and oh, it's just been a, a, an awesome road to the learning. It's it's neat to be a student again. Um, pretty cool. So, anyway, that's uh, that's my story. Uh, that's how I I got uh, hooked up with this. Uh, just from having purchased uh, an LED lightsaber, uh, I went to, into the garage and thought, okay, this is fun swinging it around like a fool, but how do I really use this thing? I want to actually kind of do this properly. Uh, with uh, with the apprenticeship program, the the seven forms of lightsaber uh, are taught. Uh, that's 
generally what uh, happens on the, uh, the regular Friday shows. And uh, to, to enter the apprenticeship program, what you have to do is demonstrate the basics of Shicho, or Form 1, in a scheduled trial, uh, which you will arrange with uh, the masters uh, to, to have done, whether it's a video, a live hangout like this. Uh, I don't know, it's, uh, there, there are many other options because uh, as TPLA is based in Ann Arbor, Michigan, I'm in London, Ontario, uh, San Francisco is represented, oh, we, we're everywhere. We're global, actually. Uh, we have members in Germany, uh, Derek Saber. Uh, yeah, we, there's, and everybody else that's out there watching as well. I mean, we're all over the world. So uh, it's kind of neat that the resources to, to learn this stuff are still there. And uh, they, I don't know, I, I'd i like to, to get some other guys. Uh, what do you think, uh, how, how are the, uh, the videos uh, working for you? Uh, I'll, I'll chime in here. Uh, the, the videos are um, super helpful for myself and the teams the team that we have here. So I'll just kind of explain that for a second. From the start up here in Winnipeg, we have uh, we had five or six guys that would get together a lot, and we did a demo at Comic Con in Winnipeg in November of last year. And right after that, we had a influx of people asking us, "How do they do this? And what would they? What could? How could they join? And and those types of things." So we spent a lot of time, kind of thinking about how we can get other people involved. And as we were getting people involved, uh, we realized that we needed to have a, uh, uh, I guess, a more of more of a a. a a curriculum, I guess, is the best way of the best way of describing it. So we went through. Thanks, guys. Okay. I think we're alive. Yes, we are. Sorry, guys. Okay, uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, sorry about the technical uh, glitch there. We just got knocked offline. So uh, we were right in the middle of uh, David uh, telling us about. The, uh, the group situation uh, with River City Jedi, and uh, you were talking uh, basically about uh, four or five guys, and that's when we uh, we got cut off. Okay, so um, everybody can hear me, yeah. <laughs> um, so we teach. Uh, we so we we started. Um, we went. We did a demo at Comic Con in here in Winnipeg, and uh, we got a large uh, group of people right after the con. Asking us if they could come and teach, if we could teach them. Um, we've even had people reach out to us and ask if we could teach their kids. Um, and we're not quite prepped to be teaching kids at this point. But uh, what we do is we uh, every second Saturday we get together with this class and we teach them uh, all the the basics of the TPLA, TPLA material. Um, we've taught them now um, an, an introductory class to every form up to form 5 uh, we haven't done I guess sorry we haven't done form 4 or form 5 yet we have those coming up shortly um, but we've gone over all of the Shicho material um, and we've gone to the point where we're ask, asking them to make their own dulons and and come up with them so that they can so they can learn to practice and and um, develop other ways to practice rather than just mimicry um, and so that's where we are right now and then we get together on our own time as well. Um, I just actually had a uh, session today with another one of the apprentices, uh, Scott, and he and we did some full speed, full contact stuff with uh, all our gear on, and uh, it was good to get out to the park and just kind of wail away on each other, which is fun. Um, but we uh, we we also teach a lot, so that was kind of how we started here and we just kind of progressed and we'll, I don't foresee we're going to get any smaller at this point. So that's me. Who's next? Cool. Thanks, man. <laughs> um, Frank, um, how about Yeah, that? I'll go next. Thanks, man. Oh, uh, one second while I figure out how to... Uh, no, nope, that's all horrible. Well, forget the lower third. Uh, I'm Frank Knight, uh, I'm one of the associate instructors of the San Francisco-based Golden Gate Knights. Um, we've been doing this for a little over two years now, um, 
And when we started, uh, we used the uh, the SaberCombat.com system that uh, Matthew Carrado um, from FX Sabers uh, kind of developed. Um, but since then, uh, I found that Master Anonymous was posting all these wonderful videos um, of his interpretations of the seven forms. So I started uh, contacting him and started working in addition to the normal stuff that we do every day, um, or at least every week at uh, the Golden Gate Knights. I've started also working on learning his interpretations of lightsaber combat because um, I found a lot of them is more... Um, we come from more of like a, like a kendo background. Um, my martial arts background... Uh, I have a black belt in Taekwondo, and I was trained um, in what in Korean is Kondo, but it's it's just it's Korean Kendo. Um, so Kendo and staff-based weapons um, and the Asian martial arts. And I noticed that um, where uh, Darth Anonymous, his background is, is definitely inspired by like Chinese martial arts. Uh, Vornak has a very European uh, martial arts style with like his broadsword kind of techniques. Um, just, it was a really kind of a, something that I didn't have experience in. So I've been trying to learn a lot from them on the more of the the Dejemso interpretations, the very hard forms. Um, but what we do um, at the Golden Gate Knights is uh, we meet every uh, Sunday in the Soma District of San Francisco. We train for four hours, maybe five hours uh, each week, and we go over kind of the basic uh, targeting systems and we work on uh, stage combat and uh, fight choreography. So we uh, just got done producing uh, a live show um, at the Oakland Temple that was uh, set to a Star Wars musical medley. So uh, a full orchestra played um, a medley of John Williams' Star Wars music while we performed on stage a, uh, a live lightsaber combat uh, demonstration, uh, kind of telling a little story of Jedi versus Sith to the music. And um, I'm packing up right now for next week because I'm heading down to uh, San Diego Comic-Con um, a bunch of us are going to perform with uh, Saber Guild, which is based um, in the L.A. area uh, at Comic-Con. We're going to do a, another live stage performance there. Excellent. How's that? That cover most of it? Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty neat. Um, wow. This rabbit hole goes a lot deeper than just doing it in your garage, I'll tell you that. Yeah, no, it, it goes uh, very weird. Uh, for some reason, since, I think since we're based in San Francisco, um, our group has gotten a lot of media coverage. Because uh, we're just right in Lucasfilm's backyard, so um, last uh, I think it was um, February, maybe um, the four um, instructors from the Golden Guides got flown out to New York, and we performed on the Today Show. So that was a lot of fun. Oh man, that's uh, that's awesome. Yeah, and there's also that uh, the Vader uh, the Vader Strikes uh, series uh, as well that uh, uh, going on with that. Uh, is that right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think there was actually uh, Alan Block, uh, one of the, the co-founders of the Golden Gate Nights, was actually on talking to uh, Anonymous a couple weeks back about uh, the Vader's Vault videos, which they're working on uh, with the Stump People, which is a um, more of a, uh Asian martial arts movie um, stunt choreography group based in the Bay Area, and they're doing uh, some pretty nice videos. I think they have three of them up right now, um, and there's a Kickstarter going trying to see if they can produce more. Excellent. Cool, man. Uh, thanks. And joining us um, after the catastrophe, hi, it looks like you got there uh, just in time, uh, Rick. <laughs> uh, welcome to the show, man, and um, yeah, glad to have you here. So uh, what we've uh, just been discussing is, uh, is uh, basically, uh, give, I gave the, uh, the general uh, gist about where the LX uh, Apprentice uh, program comes from. Um, so uh, what we're uh, just talking about is, um, could you maybe tell us a little bit about uh, your maybe uh, martial arts background, uh, yay, yay or nay? Um, just what got you into the uh, sabering in the first place, and uh, and what brought you to the uh, the LX program? Okay, thanks, guys. Uh, first of all, I gotta apologize for um, not arriving here on time. Um, you'd be amazed how long those lines of drawn fabrics are. Um, anyway, so um, let's see. My background. Um, my core background is mainly in Japanese weapon arts. Um, I belong to a uh, class code. Classical Weapons Dojo uh, back east. I'm currently in the Midwest now. Um, and the dojo specializes in uh, the short staff called Joe uh, and uh, versus the sword. So we do um, a number of arts in the system. So that includes um, obviously the stick, um, the uh, baton, so that's a tanjo, 
um, obviously the sword. So we do Kenjits, uh, a really, really, really old style of Kenjits, um, and um, a more modern style of EI. The, the, the two kind of complement each other and go hand in hand. Um, we also do some other more crazy stuff like uh, Kusawi Gama, so that's like sickle and chain. Uh, we also have uh, something called a jite. It's um, kind of like the half half of a sai. It was mainly used by police to um, subdue people with swords and bladed weapons. Um, so I've had the most extensive experience with that. Um, I've also been doing a little bit of fencing. Um, there's a there's a school um, here in the city. Um, they're doing actually uh, just did their national tournament this week, so um, I'm doing epe uh, mainly with those guys. Um, I also do a little bit of bagwatzang, so I kind of get and I'm very excited about um, the direction that uh, Master Anonymous has been pulling with um, the more Chinese set of things in terms of the weapons. Um, I'm also involved in the local HEMA group, so that's Historical European Martial Arts Group. So we do a little bit of uh, German Longsword, uh, we do a little, little bit of Rapier once in a while, um, Arming Sword, Sword and Buckler, stuff like that. So that's those are mainly my things I'm exposed to. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been exposed to a bass trombone, so that's, uh, that's impressive, man. Uh, how, do, how do those skills, uh, do you think, uh, lend to, uh, to your saber uh, practice? Well, I think a lot of, you know, a lot of the movement I found, like, for example, when I came in from... You know, from a Bakwatsong standpoint, and was starting to learn um, longsword. A lot of the footwork was very similar. Um, same thing with fencing. Like um, some of the legwork in Bakwatsong was actually, I was like, oh, that's the same thing in fencing. Like how you would, how do you advance, how do you lunge? Like those are all the same things, and also the things that I had to had trouble working on. Um, so there are a lot of things that are just very common, uh, just common throughout. I guess a lot of the basics are very common throughout, you know, re irrespective of whatever arts you practice. You know, there's only so many ways you can efficiently move your body. Uh, so I guess even though I'm mainly dedicated towards the Japanese and Chinese side of things, um, weapons-wise, like I appreciate how many of these concepts are so universal. So a lot of these things apply to sabering, obviously. Well, they're, they're martial arts fundamentals rather than uh, right. fundamentals or uh, or escrima for that matter. It's, uh, it's, uh, I'm learning a lot of that uh, uh, myself. This week. They're talking about uh, what type of throw is that? You know, like, it's just throw. What a newbie. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Um, but yeah, I didn't know that uh, there are basic throws in mm -hmm. all martial arts. And uh, yeah, it's not really just kind of specific. Uh, obviously, there are flavors, but... Mm -hmm. Well, I, I found like you know really interesting stuff. Like um, there was um, I don't remember which treatise I was uh, we were going through, but there was some like grappling stuff in uh, in histor historical European um, manuals, and they were pretty much identical to um, what you would do in Aikido, for instance. It's yeah, pretty it doesn't much really get into the letter. So it's 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 like you know there's only so many ways you can efficiently move somebody. Yeah, no, absolutely. A, a hip toss is a hip toss is a hip toss. It doesn't matter if you learned it in the Marines or in a wrestling class in high school or in a jujitsu class. It's all the same body mechanics. That's right. Cool. And um, last, uh, lastly, but not leastly, of course, uh, we have Lucian. Um, I don't know, man. What uh, what got you into sabering? Oh man, uh, I have been. Um, sorry, thanks. I've sorry. Been, oh no problem. Uh, I've been a huge fan of, of both Star Wars and uh, and martial arts for like my entire life. Um, and uh, I didn't get to start doing martial arts until I was a little older. Uh, my parents, you know, they just they wouldn't get me in classes until they were until they were certain I was like I was serious about it. And uh, by the time I was a little older, like I I'd been hounding them about it forever. So. Uh, they, they finally let me start doing martial arts, and I started doing a style called Shorn Ryu, uh, which is an Okinawan style of, uh, of martial arts. It's, a, it's an empty-handed uh, fighting style. 
there's no sword, and I've always I've always been really um, I've always been a huge fan of swords. Um, so whenever Star Wars, you know, whenever I saw Star Wars for the first time when I was like six, I mean, I fell in love with the lightsaber. Um, and so for for you know, like I said, most of my life I've had this you know I've had this love for martial arts, had this love for swords, and I've had this love for lightsabers. Um, so you know, I mean, in some form, uh, mostly primitive as I was a kid, I've always been doing you know some form of lightsaber combat, be it sticks in the backyard, PVC pipes, whatever I could find. You know, I've I've always been swinging something around. Um, and uh, and when I and when I joined the Marine Corps, I I found the the Master Replicas FX lightsabers, and just oh man, I mean I it, it was it was over at that point. I, I you know I always had one, and I would always break them, and I had no clue there was anything better out there. Um, and so I, you know I stumbled upon you know dualable lightsabers, and then I stumbled upon FX sabers, uh, and, and you know I started getting more ingrained in the community, and I started. Uh, you know, I started showing videos of, of things that I was doing. I started showing sparring videos. I started showing, you know, all kinds of stuff that, that I was working on. And um, and so, you know, I just, this is, it was always a natural transition for me for, for martial arts and Star Wars. It just seemed to go hand in hand. And, uh, and, when, uh, and, when, and when Chad, uh, whenever Master Anonymous came onto the scene uh, and started TLP Live and asked me if I wanted to be in it, you know, be involved, I mean, uh, of course, you know, why not? Um, this is a this is a community that's uh, you know based to to bring the uh, the dueling community together, and uh, and so it's something that was you know that I was very excited to be you know a part of, if not just in name, but you know in contributions as well. So uh, this is this is something really fun um, and, and just amazing and and special. Excellent, man. Yeah, I fell in love with it. I thought, yeah, okay, I've always wanted a lightsaber. Got this thing, I was like, okay, got to do something with this. <laughs> Anyways, uh, no, thanks, everybody. So um, I guess uh, we're going to get to the uh, the next part of the show. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, do we have any uh, – any? I think we do have um, – somebody asked something on uh, line here. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, Corin Horn. From uh, Imperial uh, Republic Armory, asks uh, if um, GGK. Somebody can help me out with that. There. Uh, uh, that's Golden Gate Knights. That's Golden Gate Knights. Sorry. Uh, if Golden Gate Knights is more sparring based or more choreography based. Uh, yeah. So we're um, a choreography based group. Um, we don't officially do any sparring. Um, it's hard for that never to occur when you have a bunch of guys and girls hanging around with lightsabers. Sometimes that does happen. But um, uh, we're officially just a fight choreography group uh, to do stage performances, uh, mostly because our goal is to be licensed and approved by Lucasfilm. So we're, we do not only just uh, the martial arts aspect, but we also have like the costuming ac uh, aspect for live performances and stuff um, because Lucasfilm does not support anything sparring. So if we were to do sparring, then that just completely removes the possibility of us being an officially uh, recognized entity from Lucasfilms like the 501st, the Rebel Legion. Oh, I had no idea about that. That's uh, pretty cool. And he uh, also says, um, the KK. Or maybe that was just uh, the comment below that. But anyways, <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice cat. Um, cool. Any other uh, comments or questions from the audience? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I, have, I have a question for you guys. Yeah. Um, Prior to joining uh, the LX program, um, how has your views changed from that on with respect to safety to after being in the LX program for a little bit? I'll, I'll hop on that one to start with. Um, I uh, I spent my life pretty much like Lucian. Um, I anytime there was a stick handy was pretty much get turned into a weapon of some form um, I think the most expen the most uh, the the largest amount of time that I'd ever spent fighting was with a broken axe handle with uh, we like sawed off the sawed off the, the shattered part so that it was just because uh, axe handles are great they have a nice little curve to them you can hold on to them they're, they're designed to be held in one hand so you know you, you use that and it was that and a broken hockey stick I think and me and my brother would would fight so he would fight with the staff and I would fight with the with the broken axe handle and we'd 
all the time. Um, never really managed to hurt ourselves really at all. Um, but that kind of transitioned into not really having this feeling of I'm not going to get hurt. Um, and then I transitioned into fighting with with Bokens, with uh, with Scott, and uh, we got to the point where we, where we were fighting that a, we hit ourselves and wrapped knuckles and wrists and forearms and things so many times that uh, it got to the point where we were actually looking to try and find gloves that would work. Um, specifically, we're only looking in the martial arts world. Unfortunately, uh, we we didn't know about uh, we didn't we didn't really know about lacrosse gloves, but then that's what we use now. Um, but we uh, got to the point where we actually had to stop because we were going so hard and going so fast that it was to the point where if we would have hit each other, and at this point we'd be breaking bones. So n we we moved to that. Um, we, we stopped doing things specifically for that. Um, now getting into this, we, we see... Um, on a very regular basis, some really nasty bruises that happen even when we're wearing gear. And so I can only imagine how bad those bruises and the damage would be if we weren't wearing gear. Um, and so I think that safety is huge, but wearing gear also provides us the, the affords us the opportunity to actually fight at full speed. And that's a, that's a, a, another big advantage to safety gear is not having is, is you still want to be careful because you obviously don't want to hurt your opponent while you're sparring but it allows you to be uh, to let yourself go and to give yourself to give yourself that commitment to that strike and give yourself that commitment to to those blocks and making sure that you're actually moving properly because it that's a really good way of knowing if you're training properly is once you actually get to the point where your body is has to react if you are actually reacting um, and that's a that's a big thing for us as well um, and I think that uh, I think I, I posted a couple of pictures of some of the welts and bruises that we get um, and those things they, they, they happen um, most of the guys wear those bruises as badges of honor most of them are uh, strikes on the forearm and wrist normally that's where we get them now. It's, this is the only place I think that we actually get hit on a regular basis that isn't covered in gear, um, and so we we have that that happens on a regular basis. I've actually started wearing um, Shock Doctor football pads that, that they they're just it's just like a slip on uh, slip on tension uh, tension piece that just wraps around and has just a pad and it's it's just designed to protect yourself. And um, everybody's like, I want to buy those. And I'm like, yeah, they're online. They're 15 bucks a piece. <laughs> Have at her. But, you know, and it allows people that, that functionality and to be able to not have to worry about getting hurt is a big thing. But, yeah, safety is huge. We've, we've gone, we've got to the point where you just, you can't get hurt anymore. It really affects your life um, outside of sabering if you get hurt. And you can get hurt pretty badly. Uh, to add on to that, um, currently I'm out of uh, competition with an injury. I actually tore my hamstring uh, doing saber-related activities. Uh, I have MRI scheduled for next week. Um, so yeah, like things things happen, and you know sometimes you just get hurt. Uh, but the best thing to do is kind of uh, prepare as much as you can beforehand so that you don't. For example, like um, a lot of times when we're doing stage shows and we want to have like a lot of uh, force effects or we want to have a lot of falls and stuff. It's really a good idea to get a pair of like Nike combat shorts or something like padded football shorts underneath so that when you when you're taking your falls and you're taking your repetitive actions, you don't end up tearing your hamstring. Cool. Um, for uh, for me, uh, it was actually um, Masters Anonymous in Bornock personally, uh, who kind of introduced me to uh, to sparring uh, with gear on. Uh, really up until then, uh, with an LED lightsaber and, and taking this more or less seriously uh, at that point, um, now I take it seriously, but I was fighting a, a then three-year-old, now a four-year-old. <laughs> so a lot of Soraisu was happening. Um, actually, it was all Soraisu. And yeah, it's not really too much to, to block a, a four-year-old swing. So didn't really mind too much gear, I wasn't going to worry about hitting my son's hands because, well, I'm not going to swing at him, so gear wasn't really that interesting to me, but um, I saw the, the Saber, uh, Saber Fit Challenge uh, episode, 
saw everybody gear up, and I thought, hmm, I'm going to get some gear, and we'll, we'll give that a shot. So I actually went down to Ann Arbor, Michigan, Terra Prime Central. Um, and uh, under the Death Star, with full gear on, uh, Anonymous and I squared off against each other. Uh, again, I admit that I didn't even hit him, and I didn't even see half of the shots that hit me. These are glowing blades. We know that. I didn't see it. It was just, wow. So, from that point on, uh, I was absolutely hooked, but it, it wasn't until uh, what Master Bornock did for me, where he put his three-weapon mask on, told me to hit him in the side of the head. So, <laughs> so yeah, gave him a tap. He goes, harder. Harder. I was like, oh my god. Harder. And I said, okay, okay, I have to actually, inside my brain, turn off the safety flags that make me not swing any harder than this for fear of actually physically injuring somebody. And then, he goes, good. That's, that's, that's the exact tone I could, I could possibly copy. was, good. Like, okay, I swung to kill. Uh, more or less, it would have killed anybody that I know. Uh, it would have killed me if it hit me. Nothing. Just clack right off the three-weapon mask. And I thought, this is it. So, I actually got a couple blocks in the next time I went up against Anonymous. Still didn't hit him, but <laughs> uh, from then on, literally, I will not duel without gear on. I, it's, it's not an intelligent move. Um, fingers. Uh, everything. Just you're absolutely right. Get gear if you're gonna do this stuff. I, I, to me, it's not a choice anymore. It's gear or, or nothing because a it's just so much fun. Watch all your forms bleed away into okay, kill or be killed. Uh, saber hilt is shaking in my hands while I'm just standing there in the crate's horn. It's like okay, what do you do? Anyways, that's my uh, experience with uh, with gear and um, yeah, uh, Master Lucy and I would say that. Um, there would be no way uh, there would be any gearing uh, if, if we started up a, a club here. No way, without gear. So uh, I guess, uh, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, I, another question so we can segue into a, a different topic. Uh, for, for you guys, what do you guys feel your, your, greatest, uh, your greatest obstacle to overcome has been with, while with the LX program? Finding the time and space, and uh, <laughs> really, uh, uh, there's never any lack of interest. But uh, yeah, it's just can't really do it outside. All of my sabers are really loud. I could solve that, but yeah, it's really just time and uh, time and space for me. Yeah, same for me. I I echo Eric's um, issues. Like, um, I have space uh, right by a picnic area, but it's currently being renovated right now, so the only place that I can practice is actually in my garage. Well, my garage isn't very, very low ceiling, so um, I have a lot of issues. Like, for example, I just started doing Ataru stuff, and I keep on hitting the um, my lights in the garage. In fact, I was doing something very, very slow. I was doing one of the Suma techniques really slow, and I wasn't watching where I was going, and I actually displaced two of my fluorescent light bulbs. I smashed them in half, like without much effort. It was just bam. So um, yeah, space is definitely an issue. Um, and uh, well, it's also it's not just space, but it's also you know finding time and also finding a place that's decently lighted, so that you can you know, record decently. Uh, can I make a recommendation for anybody who wants to work on their Ataru? Uh, most gymnastics academies have open mat time, and for a small fee, five, ten dollars, allow you to come in and work out in the gymnastics facility. Uh, gymnastics uh, have uh, floor exercise mats that are spring floors, so it takes um, pretty much all of the impact out of falls and anything kind of mess up. Um, a lot of my friends that do parkour and stuff, that's where they train uh, as well. So it, it allows you to kind of feel like, yeah, I can go for a butterfly kick. Like, I'm not going to kill myself. And it allows you to, in a, in a safe way, kind of learn and work on uh, those techniques. So says the guy with the ripped hamstring. 
<laughs> open swim, open mat. That's really cool. I didn't know that. Um, for me, uh, my biggest challenge is um, is is time, but mostly because I fill my life with so much other stuff. Uh, I outside of work, I also I also have a uh, company that I build savers um, and I sell them to people. So I that's balance my time between building custom savers, actually working um, on my saber technique, and then I'm I'm on two soccer teams, and uh, so I I have to balance my life in 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 that in that sense. But I mean I get together and I do as much work as I can. I do spend a bunch of time. Um, Making sure that I am kind of applying, applying my techniques, uh, even if it's in in small doses, five ten minutes at a time, to make sure that I actually get together, get get my mind and the things that I'm thinking about together. Um, so for me, I think that's and that that in my size, I'm a big guy. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm six three and I'm just over three hundred pounds. So I'm trying to bring myself down. I'm using that uh, using that to. Uh, Using this to help with my weight loss, and um, it's it's helped a lot, and it gives me uh, it gives me dedication and and forward momentum on, on uh, and and in in a, a visible um, visible progression in my ability because there are some things that I can do now that I could not do six eight months ago, um, mostly because of my size. Um, so that's definitely a, a big a big difference for me. Uh, for me, my biggest uh, obstacle with the, the Terra Prime system is that right about the time the Learn and Exiles program started is when I, oh, I injured my leg. So I've been like at a snail's pace for quite a while. Um, my original like interest was in the Taro and the Gemso, uh, but now with my leg being kind of injured, suddenly I, I have to pull back and it's, just, it's all kind of like defensive Makashi old Ben style because I, I don't have maneuver, maneuverability. A, a lunge is a lunge and a lunge is a thing I can't do right now, you know? Um, my right leg is pretty mangled at the moment, so I've been working a lot on um, kind of tighter wrist combat motions and defensive techniques to kind of offset that just so I don't uh, get too rusty while well, my leg heals up. But uh, pushing myself a little too hard caused myself some injuries, and so now I have to slow stuff down and kind of reevaluate before I can uh, move forward as fast as I would like to with the Terra Prime program. Um, so uh, we've got about, uh, I'd say about uh, 14, 15 minutes left. I think we'll give a couple, a couple of extra minutes there just because of the, uh, uh, yeah, there's a reason why we're, I'm an apprentice and uh, not a master here. Uh, we'll have it, uh, that in the two-part special today. <laughs> anyway. uh, but anyways, guys, uh, uh, it's okay. I wouldn't mind uh, going on to the uh, short-term and long-term goals um, with uh, the LX Apprenticeship Program. Um, this I don't know might uh, might help us out, um, uh, inspire uh, new members to uh, to come and come to us, and maybe they have uh, these goals too, and are just wondering how to get started. So, uh, does anybody want to uh, share their uh, their short term and long term goals uh, with the the LX program? Uh, sure, I'll I'll hop on it. <laughs> um, so my uh, my short term goals is to kind of uh, rehabilitate and. Uh, start learning um, some more of the, the more advanced uh, TLP interpretations. Things like, you know, um, Vornak just posted his uh, Degemso uh, dual on. By the way, Degemso or Gemso? What is everybody's opinion on that? Gem. Silent Gem. E. <laughs> like Django Unchained. Yeah, like Django Unchained. Yeah, same thing. All right. Um, and then my, my long-term goal is to uh, get certified as an instructor so that I have the ability to teach, teach the uh, the Saber Combat system as well as the um, TL pri uh, TLP system. And then I can kind of work it all into what we do down here so that we can, if we want to do sparring, we can do sparring under TLP, uh, Terra Prime. If we want to do choreography, we can do that in the Saber Combat with Lucasfilm and kind of get everything organized so that we all have the best way of doing each individual activity. Uh, I'll jump in. Uh, short term, I really want to. Um, I'm kind of talented right now because um, I've got something coming up that's going to eat away at my time in the next month. So uh, I want to try to get through as much of the basics um, up to Ataru as I can 
Um, um, long term, I one of the things I really like about the TPLA program, um, and especially learners in Excel program, is the way that the curriculum so far has been constructed. Um, it comes from it's based off of ideas from people of very different backgrounds. Um, and here you can see it, it's just how nice that you know some of the foundations are you know of all these different people's backgrounds are pretty similar. You know, so you you know, you have a pretty solid foundation it's based off of all these people, all the contributors' experiences, uh, and then going forward, you know, it's a very um, the way I the way um, I understand TPLA's kind of objectives is it's kind of a evolving thing where you know the more people uh, and the more back uh, people's backgrounds um, can add to the program the richer the experience you know, and the richer the repository of knowledge um, that anybody can tap into. So um, my hope is that um, at a certain point I can help with that and also encourage other people to contribute uh, from their own backgrounds. So that's my long-term goal. Excellent. Yeah, I keep uh, forgetting I, I mute my mic here, so it's my back here. It's kind of loud tonight. Um, thanks, man. And um, excellent. Um, I'll go next. Um, my short-term goals um, are to kind of get a more of a handle on the the the, the beginning four forms. Um, I understand Shicho fairly well. I've been instructing it for, I guess, six months now, uh, but. Uh, to really get a, a good strong basis in in, in the Makashi Suresu and Ataru, um, and then to uh, and to, to test for my night, which is going to be probably about a year out from now, um, and then in long term goals to be able to instruct it. So to get to get to you know once I'm a night to be able to actually really instruct uh, up here and be able to be able to test people. Up here and, and help them grow their system um, in a, in a, at a wider base. Now that we're now since we have the uh, the the base here and the people who want to learn to to be able to instruct them um, and and teach them the system. Cool. Thanks, man. Okay. Um, I guess I'll uh, I'll go next. Uh, so uh, my uh, my short term goals are are really to increase control. Uh, with with my saber, uh, because I don't have a martial arts background. Well, I, I look like a non martial arts backgrounder coming into the uh, coming into the game, seemingly late. Uh, so, just a little bit more control, uh, grace. Uh, I, I could use some of that. I'm a little out of shape and practice, but uh, well, just like you said, Dave. Um, I, just, I know my 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 saber is uh, the one I normally use is is about two pounds, and like really. Wow, I, I'm a sedentary person, uh, but after even just starting to swing the saber around, uh, I, you're right. Uh, fitness definitely a short-term goal. Uh, could be a long-term goal too. Uh, kind of liking where that's going. Uh, and uh, my short-term goals with the program as well uh, is to to get a, a better understanding of the uh, the fundamentals of martial arts. Uh, I, I I always loved lightsabers. Uh, I'm a Wikipedia junkie, but um, I don't have the martial arts fundamentals. Uh, you know, footwork is new to me. Uh, breathing I got from music, but uh, yeah, just just when when instruction was given about the footwork, I noticed everything just kind of opened up right there. It's like, okay, the swing got stronger, and and they were right. They say almost half of the strength with twice the effectiveness. What martial arts is uh, almost like a, a contradiction to to everyday life. Uh, it is my short-term goal to start understanding that a bit better. Uh, Long-term goals? Well, uh, Gabe's four right now. He's my son. Uh, he'll be five in October, and when he's around, uh, hopefully six or seven, uh, it would be a, a long-term goal of mine to uh, to maybe start something serious like uh, like kendo, uh, just because I love uh, I love uh, Jap no, basically Japanese weapons too. Uh, <laughs> there was one weapon I needed that was actually real that I, I would just. What's the, the one weapon you could have? Yeah, katana, no problem. Easy. 
Uh, so Kendo is definitely uh, on the plate uh, for me, and I'm hoping that the uh, the LX program can uh, can sort of I don't know uh, play play into this and uh, and hopefully uh, eventually get the the best of both worlds there. Um, uh, also, uh, another goal that I have uh, with the program um, is to to be a mentor to to other apprentices, uh, especially as we do uh, move up uh, within the ranks. Uh, just kind of be a, a peer mentor, someone. Uh, I've, we always had study groups uh, in college and university and stuff like that, so yeah, well, why not here? Um, I, I do uh, have a, uh, I, I taught at a community, co uh, community college here in London for, for six years, so um, I did a lot of uh, content uh, administration and uh, especially well, for the school stuff, but uh, a long-term goal I'd have as well is uh, to be uh, a content uh, administrator and uh, and help out with the, uh, the video production and, uh, and learning materials. Because you know, I <laughs> kind of turns out I'm I, I'm a, I like to stand in front of cameras for some reason. I never thought it was one of those people. But I, I don't know. I'm told uh, that they they like that, so I don't. Care. I'll do it. <laughs> so if I could help out in any way possible, uh, that's uh, that's also my goal with TPLA, but as a support staff uh, member. Uh, not necessarily as a, a full instructor. Wouldn't mind getting an uh, instructorship uh, and be able to do that, but my strength lies with supporting the system. And um, it's also why I actually volunteered to, uh, to host the show tonight uh, due to the potential cancellation. No way. <laughs> We'd hit. Show must go on. So that's, uh, those are my long-term goals uh, with the, the program. And you know, so far, it's, it's just been a, a slow but uh, steady, steady climb. And... Uh, I don't know, things get easier and new things open up and that's all back to square one, it's hard again. So and then you just keep climbing. So uh, yeah. So that's uh it's gotta keep going, huh? Oh it was it uh, practice, patience and perseverance. That's uh that's uh, on the end of a lot of the T P L A videos. That's definitely good advice. So, uh does um yeah, we're kinda winding down here. Did anybody else uh post uh, anybody post online or anything like that? Looks like everything's been uh, kind of quiet. Um, All right, Lucian's, Lucian's goals, he's got to go over his too. He's yeah, I didn't go over mine, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, Dave called me out, threw me under the bus. Um, Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, I'm all about the bus throwing. <laughs> uh, so my, my short term, my shirt, uh, my short-term goals uh, with uh, with Terra Prime uh, for now um, are just to start getting videos back out. Um, I haven't posted a video, I think, in almost a year. Um, haven't gotten anything out. Haven't really been doing much. I've been doing a lot of. Uh, I've actually been doing a lot of practicing, uh, but I haven't been getting any. You know, I haven't been getting any material out. I haven't been getting any filming out, uh, and I've just kind of uh, grown complacent and. Uh, and actually, you know, con contributing to the community. Um, so my short-term goals are just to get out of my, my, you know, rut here and just start actually getting some stuff out. Uh, as far as long-term goals go, um, my long-term goals are just to uh, to keep bringing things to the community that make people say, "Wow!" Uh, is, is just to keep. You know, showing different uh, different approaches and different aspects of things, and uh, you know, kind of my 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 hook into this is uh, is the tactical um, approach to lightsaber combat, um, and so uh, because of that, you know, I, I I tend to have some unique views on things, and and uh, and I enjoy bringing those to the table. So long term is just to keep that going and, and never let that be something that I lose sight of. Excellent. Uh, so do you want to elaborate kind of for the people who might be new, uh, what exactly is your area of expertise as far as uh, the TLP um, masters and like what uh, you'll help everybody learn? Certainly. Uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm currently uh, I'm a knight with, uh, with the, with the uh, TPLA program. Um, and uh, my background is, uh, is military. I was with the Marine Corps for four years. Um, I was with uh, special forces. I have uh, certain specialized training that just helps um, with approaches on 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 martial areas. Um, and so, some of the things that uh, I think a lot of the people who have done uh, uh, you know like training sessions with me via Google Plus or Skype, 
would say is, is that I kind of I, I make it easy to kind of dumb down certain concepts to uh, to to bring it to people who've never heard of these concepts. And so a lot of times you you know we we, we watch these martial arts movies and we see you know we see the Mr. Miyagi's and we see these like wise old sages say, oh young grasshopper, you must snatch the pebble from my palm and then you are ready. And so uh, instead of taking that approach, you know, I'd, I'd rather relate what you're trying to do to something that you do every day. Uh, because if I can relate something that you're struggling with to something that you're doing every day, then you're going to immediately get it. And if you can get it, then you can move past that obstacle and you can, you can you know, finally start to progress where you want to get and you can reach your goals. So a lot of what I'm about with, with, uh, with, with TPLA is helping people reach their goals. And, and doing it in a way that maybe people haven't thought of before. Awesome. Thanks, man. Cool. Uh, well, we have a, just a couple minutes left. Um, when we join the show, it'll probably be under an hour. Again, an apprentice move there. Sorry, Master. But uh, does anybody have any advice uh, for, for those who would, uh, would want to join the LX uh, program and, um, and how to get started and uh, words of wisdom? Uh, let's. Uh, I got an idea. Let's uh, just go down the uh, the list. I hope everybody's uh, the, the panel's all the same for all of us. Uh, uh, but Dave, did you want to start? Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll, I can go. Uh, my the the best advice for for that I can give people um, if they want to get involved in the program is to start with the videos on the YouTube page and kind of learn that. And truthfully, you, if you don't have the money to buy a saber right now, or you're not looking to buy a saber for a while, but you want to get involved in the in the program, grab a broom handle um, and start using that. I mean, anything anything can work as long as you're as long as you're you're working on making sure that your body positioning is good and your footwork is good. Uh, that's the best. That's the best thing you can do. Uh, focus on footwork. Footwork is huge. Spend spend 10 minutes every time you practice practicing footwork to start with start with five and end with five making sure that you're practicing properly um, because it will save many an injury and then you know work your way through the videos and then contact uh, the masters and and talk talk to them about um, getting uh, getting a, a trial cool uh, excellent um, so I, uh, my advice uh, to those who want to join that's uh, it's it's easy to join it's not as hard uh, as you think there's really no cause for frustration it's you work at your own pace and you're guided positive um, you have nothing to lose but uh, but nothing really it's, it's just a lot of fun uh, so I, I keep doing it because it just gets more and more fun as uh, they, I, as I get something or something so that's just my from uh, from my perspective but uh, it's it's not as intimidating as it seems. Um, you're you might be stepping into the world of martial arts, and that can be intimidating. It was kind of at first, but after a while, it's you, when you realize you're working at your own pace and you're fighting with a fantasy weapon. It's it's not so intimidating after all, guys. And it's the environment that the masters provide us. Uh, it's so welcoming. You, you don't have to really. It, you will not be insulted. Uh, that's the thing. You will get constructive criticism. If you want to join, just to see what constructive criticism looks like, join us. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Then. Uh, all right. Um, so my recommendation is kind of echoing what everybody else says. Uh, just just get started. Just just do it. Just try it. Um, if you have some friends and you want to kind of start like a local chapter, if you want to get together with some friends and work on it together, like that's always good. Um, having more people working out together is always a good way to, to push yourself, but it's in no way a requirement. Um, Master Anonymous has posted all of those uh, duelons. In essence, uh, what would be like a kata in a Japanese martial art. Single person forms that help you work on your technique and your body positioning. Um, and like Dave said, like a broom handle, a shinai, a boken, a mop, anything that you guys can find. Um, just all that you need is a stick. Uh, as overpriced as, like, for example, my little Vader Vault Dark Fury is, uh, it lights up, yay! But um, all that you really need is any sort of uh, lever to work on this stuff. The basic concepts are all the same, whether, you know, it's a broadsword or it's an escrima. Like, all of it kind of comes back to the same basic motions like Donovan always talks about. Like, there's only so much stuff the human body can do. So just pick up a stick, 
watch some of the videos, and then just, just try it and just practice it. And when you start to get kind of comfortable with your body positioning and you start to feel like you're starting to understand it, and then find a partner, start participating in the Google Hangouts, uh, and, and work on improving it from there. But just, just get started. It's always best to just kind of just dive right in the pool. There's no harm come from just diving right in. Uh, probably one of my uh, my biggest reasons for for people to join def definitely echoes what everyone else is saying. But uh, in in essence, uh, one of the biggest complaints that I hear um, online and and just for people that I talk to is that there's there's no one around me who does this. Uh, there's no one around me who uh, who who you know plays with lightsabers. There's nobody around me who do, who is is in the same hobby. Um, to which I say uh, there are, but you don't know them yet. Um, and what the apprentice program will allow you to do is it allow you to uh, gain the confidence that you need uh, to go out and succeed. Um, a lot of people, one of the things that I hear is that you know I don't I don't want to go out and practice in public because I'll look goofy, probably get made fun of. Um, and there's yeah there are there are people out there who no matter what you're gonna do. Uh, even people, you know, kind of look at me funny whenever I'm out and I'm 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 practicing and I'm going through my stuff. Uh, but in the same respect, I I can't go out uh, and not have five people uh, talk to me about my lightsaber and uh, and and want to you know kind of be interested. In, and when they hear that I teach lightsaber combat, they're blown away and they're like, "When do you do this?" So you'll attract people just by being out and 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 being knowledgeable and being friendly. Um, so the LX program not only gives you a, a, a solid base to spring from to learn, um, but it also gives you, um, but it also gives you the confidence to go out and attract others to this this fantastic hobby. Right. Uh, thanks again, Master uh, Lucien. And uh, again, last but not least, uh, at least sorry, uh, Rick. Uh, what uh, what advice would you have for the uh, LX apprentices? Apprentice. Rick, we don't have audio on you, buddy. I got it. I got it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yep, you're good, man. Um, so kind of echoing what Dan said, um, yeah, you might not think that there are, there's like you're in like a no man's land where you know there are no Star Wars fans who want to play with you, but there are lots of Star Wars fans out there, believe it or not. Um, they're just waiting to uh, have somebody, you know, show themselves out in the public so that they can do it too. Um, one of the nice things about the way that TPLA was set up was um, that it really, Star Wars really is like a common language for a lot of people, you know. Um, and through Star Wars, I, you know, it, it's a pathway to having a lot of fun with, you know, swinging a glow stick. Um, the other thing is that, um, yeah, definitely, you know, jump in, um, don't hesitate, and just go on to, um, go to the TPLA website uh, and look at all the information. Um, most importantly, though, is don't be in a rush. Don't be in a rush. Just take your time going through the stuff and making sure you understand it. You know, it's not just from, you know, um, an understanding standpoint, but also uh, for your own safety, too. Because there are some things that, you know, more advanced stuff that you probably are not, would not be prepared for if you started on the first day. You know, you'd probably get hurt a lot. So, you know, just take your time. Nobody's rushing you, except for yourself. Awesome. Thanks, uh, thanks Larry. So, uh, well, I think that's uh, about all the time we have for, uh, for the week. So, uh, again, standing in for uh, Masters Anonymous and Lornock, uh, I am E-Rock. And again, thanks a, a lot for coming uh, again, uh, Dave, and of course, uh, Frank, Master Lucian, always great to have you here, and Rick, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, technically, you were on time because you had joined us in part two of uh, today's episode, which uh, will eventually be merged into a full hour-long episode like now. So, uh, again, on behalf of uh, Terra Prime Live, um, this is Erock signing off. May the Force be with you. And may the fourth be with you. Uh, happy Independence Day, guys. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard on the YouTube channel. Cheers, guys. Thanks again. Have a good weekend.